Stay over under on that. It's time to fish a jig. That's probably the worst backlash I've ever got in my life. Oh, I just read back to cast over on that bank and it grabbed that little antenna there on your talons, just barely. And I let go and it just kept on rolling. <laughs> All right, Derby morning for the Anglers in Action Big Bass Bash Midwest Tournaments Marie Terrell Memorial Tournament. And we got fog, folks. Froggy. So we got fog. Air temperatures are right at freezing. The boat's a little bit slick, but we're going to make that 15 minute, 15 minute run. Well, maybe yeah, 20 minute run. We'll see. What, about 20? It'll be 20 today because it's a little foggy. Yeah. Tournament starts at 7. We're boat number 89. Uh, we got a 3.30 check-in time, and we're gonna go fish some jigs around docks, I do believe. It's supposed to rain this afternoon, overcast conditions. Actually, it's, it's still clear out here. It's still clear. The clouds are supposed to move in, we're gonna have some rain coming up here before too long. Well, actually this afternoon, like four o'clock. Hopefully it pushes back to five o'clock, because four o'clock's right in the middle of the way in, and nobody likes to get wet right at the end of the day. Uh, anyway. See on the water. Well, we're on the water, but see with a five pounder in our hands. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless. Uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't want to be one of the. We made it. That was a sketchy ride. We had a lot of fog until we got to the glaze. I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations Don't try to stop me, I exist to write my own story I'll make a decision if I want some peace or if I want the glory yeah. Don't want a life that is complacent or possibly boring yeah. Just want a life that is worth every day exploring yeah. My whole life I just What boat are you going? Yeah, doing good. Great job, great job. 3.30? 3.30, 3.30. Tight. Plenty, plenty of room. It's a nitro, it might sink if I bump it like that. My whole life I just wanted someone who would notice me. My whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanna be great Go. Go. You got it? Yeah, have to keep her right Yeah, you might want to bump him, but Well, this one's dry. Okay. Hey, a couple things real quick before we get into the video further. First of all, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel is a great way to support the content creators. We work hard bringing these videos to you and subscribing is just a way to say thanks. Shout out to Anglers in Action. They put on an excellent tournament very popular in the Ozarks area. You know, this tournament had over 180 boats in it. This is not a major league fishing tournament. This is not a Bassmasters tournament. It's anglers in action. And for them to draw that many boats, it talks, it says something about the organization. It just lets you know that they put on a really good quality tournament, but they also drew a lot of boats because this tournament was for a special cause. This was the Maria Terrell Bass Challenge. This is a benefit tournament in honor of Maria. She was tragically killed, murdered, however you want to put it, by a drunk boat driver on Lake of the Ozarks several years ago. Very, very sad deal, very bad deal. If you want to find out more about it, you can get on the Anglers in Action website. They have a description of how it all went down, but 
really, really bad thing, and this is a way to uh, honor her memory. I was fortunate enough to meet Marie one time fishing anglers in action years ago, and she was working in the trailer, taking the money. Sweet girl, she had a good vibe about her, and I know she's greatly missed in the Lake of the Ozarks community. Lake of the Ozarks was fishing kind of tough. If you haven't seen the practice video, check it out. Mike and I were able to spend about four hours practicing. We got a lot of bites. We just couldn't find the keeper bites. So it felt good to get a decent quality keeper in the boat right off the bat, first thing in the morning, but we had a lot of work to do. One more thing, at the end of this video, Mike and I did a long recap. We talk about everything we did, the adjustments we made, and our thoughts on the tournament. So watch this video all the way through. There he is. Yeah. Little guy. It's a little brush pile or something down there on the side of the dock. Ain't gonna help, but we got a bite. Got him. Guarantee that's the fish that made that ruckus over there. Jesus. Good hook set, Mike. <laughs> there we go. Hi, right, number two. You're gonna have to get bigger, but it's a good start. See on the back of that dock or what? Or just right, right where that one splashed. Oh, wow. Yeah, I saw him come out from the dock. That's why you come to Lake of the Ozarks, folks. Right there, man. Spot. You gotta be 15 though, I think. Yeah. We're watching from your boat. Were you hung and you popped it off there and you grabbed it? Off that corner by the ladder over there. Just wasn't a bite, it was just heavy. <laughs> yeah. Caught me one. The bite? Oh, 
the other one. Let's see if he's got a jig in his mouth. <laughs> nope. Might be more than one down there. We just pulled in one little pocket and got three bites off of one brush pile. It's tough out here. Just, um, we've been working a jig. I've been getting some bites on a two. Can't get bit on a shaky head. It's just a lot tougher today than it was yesterday. I'm sure some people probably caught 20 keepers by now, but we got two in the box. We got about two and a half hours to go and we need about 15 pounds, I think. So we're not gonna give up. Tube finally had something to bite. I think they're starting to turn on a little bit. Another shorty. Lake of the Ozarks is fishing tough for whatever reason. The day before in practice, we got a lot of bites. The quality wasn't there, but we were getting a lot of bites. Today, not so much. I mean, the bites are few and far between. We're really scrambling to, I don't know, just to get bit, get some feedback. Concentrating on bottom bouncing baits, you know, Mike kept the jig in his hand all day long. I mixed it up, which I typically do. I just kind of played around with the Alabama rig, which I couldn't get bit on that. I threw in a jerk bait, um, a tube, a crocogator tube was getting some bites for sure, and a jig. Just kind of mixing up shaky head. I was trying a little bit of everything, which is typically what I do on the back of the boat just to make sure we're not missing something. But Mike, Mike uh, faithfully kept that jig in his hand, but we're running out of time. We do not have a lot of time. So we make a move to another cove and we've literally got like an hour left to fish. Feels like um, like this section's dead or something. You know what I'm saying? It's like we almost need to run to Greg's or run towards the dam or something. Yeah, need to hit like the key spots. The same fish you think? I don't think so. I think the other one was bigger. <sighs> okay. One little tick and then two. Jerked it out of the oh shit. Screw. Sorry. 
I didn't even notice. Oh, the Velcro works good. There's one that lay down. It's feisty. Remember, this is about what time we got out here yesterday. Well, a little bit later, but. No bueno. I think they're just starting to bite. Popped it off of something down there and got the little tick. Good one. Riding a short bus today, folks. Yes, sir. Oh, how come I get the hooks of these little ones so good? See a deer right there? Trying to swim. Slow down, brother. <laughs> He's still fighting. <laughs> never quit. Team I think, never quit. I think it's a keeper. I think so. I can't tell. He got his freaking mouth pin. Yeah, he's a small keeper if he is. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's he's a keeper. Five pounder, come on, five pounder, where you at? That's a good one, yeah. It's a bass. There we go. Got our five. Fish of the day. Crumbling bro. There we go. Never give up. We got five. Ain't got much weight, but it feels good to get a lemon in the boat. It's a good fish. Just a little tick. Jig, they're all pretty close. Pick one that's not on the white color gleam and toss it out. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless. Uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't want to be one of the nameless. I'ma wake up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it. And I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations. Don't try to stop me, I exist to remember your story. 89. 89. Thank you. Some good help right there, get them started young. Put lots of water in there. I think we got one that pisses horribly. 
somebody It's as big as it's gonna get, folks. The one, the white one. That's our lunker. Kicker fish. We're gonna be out of water here pretty soon. <laughs> the screen went off, but it's still filming. Yeah, it's good. I can't tell if I got you in the frame or not, but. Hard to tell when you don't have the damn display, huh? Yeah. Kind of a shitty design. Might have ten pounds. Might be. One more. Giant. I missed that sound. I think it's supposed to stay warm. Yeah. And I'm burning up now. Woo! 64. TJ said thumbs up for that one. There you go, thumbs up. I like it. What's up, brother? Good, man. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. What's up, man? How's it going? Good to see you. How you doing? Good. We got five little ones. I had one five. I had three fish for eleven and a half pounds. You got the right ones. Yeah, it was it was tough. They got a big bass right here, of course. All right, they got two more to add to that. Appreciate you guys fishing. Appreciate you guys fishing. Hey, how's it going, man? Good. How'd you guys catch these three fish? Uh, 89. Frank Bait right there for 838 on three fish. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. 838 on three fish. Do me a favor. We're going to give you this ticket right here and then to the back of the trailer for phone. Boat number? 89. Boat 89. How many fish? Five in a bag for boat 89. Mike Marvell and Dave Montgomery. They got five in a bag. All right, here we go. A big bass. A weight of easy, easy trigger. 298, 298, 298. Here we go. Trying to figure out how to give away this gear. Carry him up. We got more back there. All right, Marvell Montgomery right here. What's up, brother? Hey, How you doing? Five. Good to see you. You too, man. Hey, yeah, Appreciate hey, you guys good. fishing. Hey. The Memorial Turn, we're going to get away to 1161. Going to put you in eighth place, unofficially. Wow. Eighth, eighth place. place. Seriously? Yep. Oh, Holy moly. Yeah, I might go. Here you go. Here's your ticket. And then head to the back of the trailer. Okay, thanks, man. Boat number, sir. How many fish? 85. Five in the bag. Joe McBride and Sam Engelmeyer. Hey, how's it going, man? Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. What's your name? Tim. Tim. Okay, good to meet you, man. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe how low the weights were right now. Ah, I mean, we struggled all day, but it's like he said we were in eighth place with 1161 or something. Like, That's why you come way in, right? Yeah, we were about to throw them back. I went to the Toyota tournament, and they were talking, the Toyota owners tournament, two years ago. They are talking about thunderstorms started rolling in and Oh, thanks, man. I'm sorry. I forgot he was looking for me. Oh, that's all right. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Golly. Hey, Roger. How are you? Good. How are you guys? What's up, buddy? Hey. What's up, Randy? How are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. Did you get them today? We had 11. What we had? 41. I would have never. We were. I would have never thought that would have given me a check. Yeah. see a big fish for the camera that's what we had five of those like that there you go that's more like it yeah she looks like he's ready to spawn that might get your first place on the big bass side at this point i think somebody said it was only four something yeah, you gotta be all right i keep on showing A lot of people struggle to catch aching. Good job, man. 
I think it's gonna be better than what you think. Oh, yeah. Uh, you got more weight than we have. about our favorite tournament. What's up, bro? How are you? I'm doing good. How you doing? Good. You guys get them up today? Yeah, we had 11, 4, 1 or something. Yeah. That was tougher than what I thought. Yeah. It was really tough. I we needed the whole time. We, we got, got 12 minutes. I just caught, got rid of like a one that I was like, I don't even know if this fish touches, man. <laughs> yeah. We just got rid of it for like a two and a half pound Kentucky. But. We caught our last two keepers in the last hour. No kidding. Yeah. It was, yeah. That's it's probably tough. this weather coming in too. Have yeah. To bite a little bit in the in the afternoon. I don't know. Yeah, it was tough, man. It was. We went out yesterday for about four hours, and we pulled in one cove and had like a bunch of bites. Yeah. On a jig, and we're like, they're biting pretty good. And then this morning we caught two keepers. It's well, fair, like it took two hours to get two keepers, and yeah. then it was just like Nothing. dead. Yeah, it was Jeez. dead. We did. We did. I said we got to go some. Around. We caught one like caught one on a rope, a couple on a jig, caught one on a glide, and they just like slopped it together. You know? mm -hmm. I, I was telling, I told Mike, I'm like, we gotta get out of this area. This yeah. area, this dude, this part of the lake the feels place. funky. We need to <laughs> I think roll. It's everywhere, dude. <laughs> yeah, that, and that's what he said. He said it may like maybe like this everywhere, yeah. and, it, and it was. Yeah. It's just like just dead. Um, he wants me to come down there. Okay. What day is the fifth? Is that Wednesday? No, they're all on Monday. Like, Monday? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's fine. That so we work. got this Monday or next Monday. Either one works for me. Really? Yep. You sure? One. Yep. Should be fine. Okay. I'll uh, I'll shoot you text tomorrow. Okay. All right. Yeah, just look at it and see which one you want. Okay. Sounds good, man. You too, bro. All right, folks, we're back at Greg's Casa, and that was a good old-fashioned grinder tournament. Bites were few and far between, but we kept our head down and managed to scrape up five for 1161, I believe, which put us in 23rd place. They paid 25 places, so we scratched out a check. I believe there were 187 boats and lots, lots of hammers in this tournament, so... I feel pretty good about it. Weights were really, really tight. Congratulations to Brian Tracy and D. Andy Newcomb. They had 19 something. Second place uh, was 16 something. And like I said, the weights were just really, really tight all the way down through. Lots of people struggled. Everybody struggled really, to be honest. We got two keepers in the boat probably, well, the first couple hours maybe. It took a while, didn't it? It was about maybe a, three. I mean, that was like the first hour and a half, probably. Okay, first hour and a half, we had a couple small keepers. They came on a jig, and then there was a long period where we didn't get a whole lot of bites. And we bounced around, we found, it seemed like when we got in the right area, we got bites fairly quick. And our pattern for the most part, obviously we were fishing docks and brush piles, but it seemed to be you know, like the last third maybe of the coves, would you say? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If not even further back. Yeah. Yeah. So still pretty shallow. I'm sure people caught them all different ways. Um, <clears throat> I know I talked to some guys that caught them on jerk bait and there was a buzz bait bite going on, but the one common denominator with everybody I talked to was how tough it was. It was just really, really a struggle to get a lot of bites. You just had to keep your head down and, and keep your bait wet. Um, I caught the fifth keeper that we put in the boat. I caught that on a three eighths ounce Cumberland Pro Lures. It's the Pro Caster jig and naked crawl. And I had a, the yum crawl chunk for a trailer. That naked crawl color, if you're not familiar with it in the Cumberland Pro Pro Caster, it's a really good Ozark color. It works around home. I'm from Cape Girardeau area. It works good in Southern Illinois, but it also works really good in these Ozark lakes. So keep your eyes peeled, with, peeled for that. Um, the Crocagator tube has been one of my favorites. It's actually, it is my favorite tube. I caught several fish on that. I had it rigged up on a stupid tube. If you're not familiar with how to rig up the stupid tube, I have several videos on that, so you can check it out on my YouTube channel. But the color that I was throwing today was the, the PB&J with blue, or the green pumpkin purple is another really good color. That's just something that the fish don't see a lot. It skips really well for you guys that fish docks. I like to skip stuff underneath docks. Um, it's, it doesn't have really any appendages. It's, it's cylindrical and it's really smooth and it just takes off. You can skip it like a rocket. It's got that spiraling action. It's just a little bit different action, a little bit different look. These fish around here see a lot of jigs and a lot of just the standard type baits, but this is just something, something different. I've had the super tournament, the BFLs. I weighed in a couple of fish on that Crocagator tube. So it's, it's become one of my confidence baits for sure. And the... 
bait that put four of our keepers in the boat was uh, a jig as well. And I can't remember what jig you were throwing. Was it jewel jig? Jewel heavy cover finesse football and a half ounce peanut butter and smoke. Okay. With the green pumpkin purple yum uh, crowd chunk. Okay. Pretty much what I throw 90% of the time. That, I think I caught one on old school to one of the keepers on the old school color, which is basically brown, black, and purple. Which okay. It's hard to beat, you know? So yeah. You, you know, you, with those three colors, you can't go wrong, right? Brown, black, or purple, mix them together, you can't miss. Yeah, just that bluegill crawfish, it doesn't really matter. It covers it all, but um, had a lot of fun. Me, Mike and I are going to be fishing the Anglers in Action Ozark Division, Lake of the Ozarks Division, next year in 2023. So we'll have more content coming early next year. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Appreciate everybody checking out this video. Give well, us a let me say one thing, Gabe. The, uh, the, uh, when you're fishing a jig down here, you really got, I mean, today was easy because we had light winds. But even though you're fishing in shallow water, you skip back up underneath there. I only felt maybe one of my bites and it wasn't a keeper today. It's that bait, just being in tune with it, that bait should be on the bottom and it's not. I kind of tightened down on my lines moving, set the hook. Never felt a tick, never felt anything. And I'm talking we're fishing in less than three feet most of the time, foot and a half to two foot was where, where, I was, where we got those keeper bites. So really got to stay focused when you're fishing a jig i know people say well you know what do i need to know about fishing a jig it's you got to concentrate that's basically it i mean it's it's, it's stay focused because there was no bite there was no thump there was no nothing it was just something ain't right now a couple times today i swung on it it was just hung on a big oak, oak leaf and swimming off but if you don't feel it hit the bottom somebody's probably got it so that's my that's my tip for the day if you're fishing a jig concentration it's a lot easier on days like today when it's calm than when the wind's blowing but even then it's the same thing you've got to stay focused i remember when you had gail on his podcast he talked about not talking when he's fishing a jig he'll tell his partner like i'm i'm not being antisocial. i'm just concentrating and that's the biggest thing in jig fishing in my opinion so that's my two cents on on fishing a jig yeah, the light wind does make the jig easier to fish, but what makes it harder is when you go for a long time without bites. It's hard to keep your mind in the game. And for instance, we had long stretches without really any bites. And we'd go into an area and then, you know, especially towards the end of the day, it seemed like there was more of an afternoon. There was like a morning bite and then it was kind of dead. And then the last two hours, you know, is where we got keepers three, four, and five. But you have to, it's hard to do. You have to keep your mind in the game because what typically happens if you're drifting, you'll get that bite and you've went an hour or two without a bite and you'll get that bite and you'll blow it because you weren't paying attention. So probably one of the toughest things about a grinder of the day is to keep your head in it. You can talk to anybody that fishes tournaments. It's just, it's so important to stay focused and to keep your bait wet. You can get frustrated and get spun out well, that's not going to do any good. You got to keep your bait wet, got to keep it in the water, and you got to be anticipating that bite because it can come anywhere. You know, even, even on a day when you're dialed into um, a certain section of the dock or a certain section of the cove, there's times when you just make a cast out deep towards a brush pile or something, you get that bite out there when most of your bites have been coming just in a, in a certain location. So you always got to keep your mind in it, and it's tough, man. And today was tough. Um, thank God we had a 3.30 weigh-in because that last keeper came with probably 30 minutes before we had to run back. And that was the keeper. Yeah, that, it might even been less than that. It might even been less than that. Yeah. Without that last fish, we don't get a check. Yeah, and that was the biggest fish of the day, too. Yeah, it was the biggest fish of the day, for sure. Um, so, and then catching three out of the one brush pile was nutty today. Yeah, we caught three out of one brush pile. You know, you go a long time between bites, and then all of a sudden there's three in one brush pile. Yeah. You know, and he broke he broke a decent one off. We think it was a good fish, which may have helped. May and then not, the other you super know. shallow one, remember, I skipped back in that little bitty hole back up under that dock. It's that was keeper like, number four, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's temporarily parked there. I mean, that's not where that dock goes. They got it tied up there until they move it somewhere. And it was skipped way back up underneath there, and I got a bite and sat on him and seen it roll, and it was a pretty decent fish. And it came unbuttoned, 
and I pitched back up in there and got bit again. I don't think it was the same fish. I think there was two fish back there because the one that came off looked bigger than the one that I actually mm -hmm. got in the boat. So it's just weird how that happens, you know. And that was in eight inches of water, nine inches of water. You know, yes. that dock was basically sitting on the bank. Yeah. So, yeah, it was nuts. And uh, like you said, you, you don't know when it's going to come. You just don't. So you got to stay focused. Air temps. This morning when we left Greg's Casa, it was right at freezing. The ramp down to the dock was a little bit slick. It wasn't bad. And <laughs> we had sticky. ice. We had ice on the carpet in the boat. And we ran out of the cove. It was foggy in here, but when we got out on the main lake, it was foggy. It was sketchy. It was one of those deals where you think you're going the wrong way because your mind starts playing tricks on you. But when we got to PB2, it was still foggy, but it was safe enough to where they let us out on time. And it got up to 52 in the afternoon, which was really nice. Sun but most of the day. Sun most of the day, a little bit of clouds about, about every once in a while. two o'clock, the clouds started rolling in. Right, and then the water temp was in the morning, I saw it was like 53, and then we got up to 55, 55 is that what you saw? 55 at the end of the day. Yeah, 55 at the end of the day. Um, conditions as far as the water clarity, I would say most places it was pretty clear. Um, I'd say about four foot of visibility. Yeah. There were some areas where we saw, I think right at the end of the day where we were at that, I'd say that was about, three foot maybe two and a half yeah. three foot it was a little yeah. slightly more stained yeah but pretty clear for lake the Ozarks. but we also had clouds so maybe that made a difference too yeah so it could have been four foot you know we haven't had a lot of rain around here um so that water is very very clear right now but that's a well, wrap that, and they haven't been pulling water yeah they haven't been pulling water so it's just it's very very clear um but even even though it is clear those fish like Mike was saying we still caught fish in less than a foot of water. They're still up there shallow and sitting in that shade. They're feeding on crawfish, feeding on bluegill. The areas where we caught keeper four and five, there were gizzard shad in the area. I don't think the fish that we caught were actually feeding on those big gizzard shad because they were, you know, five or six pounders. But there were some gizzard shad in the area. And we saw a little like a little school of carp crazy there was some like some koi and mike said hey look at that albino catfish over there and we got closer and it was just this group of probably like 30. 10 or, yeah, yeah it was 10. probably 20 it probably was it was probably 20 carp and they were probably four to six pounds yeah, four to six pounders it's really strange i don't understand that and then but, one koi swimming around with them yeah so that catfish that albino catfish was actually a koi uh, you could see it a mile away but there were gizzard shad mixed in there with those carp too so there was just a lot of life in, in these coves that we caught those fish but and the wind was pouring directly. and the wind was pouring in. that's right um so and that, that was back when it was all less than three feet yeah it was pretty flat yeah you could play you could see those carp playing as day yeah. i mean they were you know in two foot of less than two foot of water oh, yeah definitely yeah so in, interesting stuff you just never know what you're going to see out there in the water but that's it. We got to wrap this up. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Till next time. This is a statement to appreciate all that is vacant. It's just for the taking. If you make up your mind, you can take it. I'm never complacent. I would work in a mansion or basement. Yeah, there's no replacement for persistence. It's a patience. Yeah.